Good day to you friends. So what I want to talk about in this video is I I don't believe that atheists believe the claims they make. Like if you really think there is no God, then you then you're then you're arguing from absurdity because then you're then you're arguing knowingly or not that life came from non life, intelligence came from non intelligence, everything came from nothing. And that uh Effects had don't have effects can have no cause. Now we know from <clears throat> observation, science, induction, and reason that all of those things are flat out impossible. You cannot get life from non life. You can't get intelligence from non intelligence. You can't have a, uh, effects without a cause, and you can't have uh, life from non life, intelligence from non intelligence, everything from nothing. You can't have effects without cause. Now, of course, <clears throat> one of the biggest rebuttals to that will be, well, what about God? God, I mean, sorry. Um, well, God is the only uncaused cause because, I know, of course, <clears throat> atheists will say, well, that's special pleading. Well, not really, because here the, here's the thing. In order for God not to exist, infinite regress has to be logically possible and sane. Logically feasible and scientifically possible, but the thing is, infant regress, if you have any sense, is completely scientifically impossible and logically absurd. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, you know, we, we, if if <coughs> if if, our, if we went on infant regress, then we'd never be able to arrive at today. The other thing is, of course, life can't account for itself; therefore, annulling <coughs> infant regress altogether. So I don't believe I don't believe that atheists believe the claims they make, and, and I think that most atheists are just. I don't think it's <clears throat> I'm not actually you know according to Romans one there are no atheists they're just people who what suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And if you look at most most atheists, it's <clears throat> it's almost always I don't like God's standard of sexuality, the one man one woman in marriage. Pff, like what is that about? I want to fornicate, I want to sleep around, I want to maybe sleep with both sexes. <clears throat> I want to, <clears throat> you know, I basically I want to be my own God. Um, and uh, the Bible and God say, you're free to choose that life if you want, but there's going to be dire consequences for it. Now, the <clears throat> stats are confirmed that the that people who live in sexually um, in, in lifestyles that deviate from God's standard of one man and one woman, that <clears throat> the, the rates of depression, e um, eating disorders, mental disorders, um, anxiety, suicidal, suicidal ideation are through the roof in the LGBT plus community. So why is that? Now, of course, I've heard the argument that, well, that's because of... Um, you know, religious oppression, blah, blah, blah. Well, like, well, hold on a second now. You've got people <clears throat> who have been living in, in that lifestyle f probably for years who are not in any religious setting. Not, not to mention, um, you don't know that that person has been influenced by um, <clears throat> religious at all, settings at all. But even, you know, even atheists, even, okay, irrespective of your world view, most people are naturally heterosexual because that's the way God made us. And if everyone went gay, our, sex, our, our species would go in extinct another 30, 40 years. <clears throat> and so that's obviously not a good thing. So that's, you know, and, 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 it, and, that's, and that's like one reason alone what, what proves that homosexuality is unnatural because you can't, uh, procreate with someone of the same sex as you. No, <clears throat> it's obviously too that you know your genitals won't fit naturally into someone of the same sex, whereas it will be into someone of the opposite sex. <clears throat> that would obviously indicate natural um, sexuality. The ability to have normal intercourse, sexual intercourse, and to be able to uh, procreate, reproduce. So, even, you know, common sense just rules out homosexuality is natural. <clears throat> My buddy Luke actually meant 
until I don't remember the argument he gave me, but um, maybe when I'll see when I see him uh, in this coming week that uh, I'll mention that to him and because uh, he, he he told me something um, in this in this regret that even science <coughs> um, proves that homosexuality is unnatural. <clears throat> but anyways, so I don't believe that. I don't believe the claims that I don't believe the atheists believe the things that they believe, or they claim to believe. The lack of evidence is just a nonsense. The other thing is, anyone who makes a claim has the burden of proof. So if I say I have no God, I have the burden of proof. If you say there is no God, you have the burden of proof. <clears throat> now, I'm not, for, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to get into the arguments about why I believe that God exists because a lot. Like they've been, they've been the, the 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 evidence for God's existence are so overwhelming and have been so have been de um, brought forward so many times that uh, it's it's probably you're probably at the point though no matter what you someone says that you're probably not going to believe the arguments for or against God. Okay, okay, maybe I'll give you I'll give you five sh sh short reasons short reasons for inference why God exists. There's over 8 billion people on the planet, and not two, no two people have the same fingerprints. That's one. Uh, DNA is biological code. Coding requires a coder. That's two. The gravitational force is precisely where it needs to be for the conditions of life. You know, to use Frank Turek's argument, you know, I said, I need, and I, he, we, not everyone knows. It was any thinking person, I would say, has, knows that gravitation <clears throat> is not measured in Gravity is not measured in inches, but to give you an example, he said, and, to, and I'm, you know, quoting in here, that if you remove the gravitational force an infinitesimal degree in either direction, life on this planet would not exist. So that's three. Okay. <clears throat> and, um, and <clears throat> irreducible, irreducible complexity in cells. The smaller a cell gets, it, the more complex it, complex it gets, irreducibly so. Five. The human eye has over 3 million light-sensitive cells per eye. And even Darwin knew this was a problem for his theory because <clears throat> the, all the parts of the eye need to come together at one time. That's five good reasons for you to disregard atheism. Okay? And you know it. It's self-evident. Like, that's why Paul says in Romans 1-2, you're... You're, we're without excuse when it comes to God's existence. It's so blatantly obvious that this world is designed. You have to be willfully ignorant to dismiss the evidence for God. Okay. Then again, I don't believe atheists believe it. See, again, I, I don't believe that atheists believe that God doesn't exist, I think it's more that those who claim to be atheists don't like the way God runs the show. And I think that's I think that's usually what it comes down to. You want to be the captain of your own ship. Well, I mean, you know, I understand that. I mean, <clears throat> I lived my good chunk of my life that way too. And guess what? It always ended in disaster. Every single time I lived my life on my terms, my life went <laughs> destroyed. You know, relationship issues, financial issues, work issues, you name it, like mental health issues, like it's just, when you live life on your terms and your way, it doesn't work. I've tried many times, it always doesn't work. When I live my life according to the word and will of God, I have peace of mind, peace of heart, I have peace with my maker, I have peace with myself, I have peace with my fellow man. And things click. When I live according to the word and will of God, everything works. No, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm just saying the Bible makes sense. The Bible makes sense. Like, we rebelled against God. Okay? That's why we're in the mess we're in. We sinned. That's why we live in this broken, fallen, screwed up world. We're responsible for it. Now, of course, most atheists can't wrap their head around a perfect, more, perfectly moral and loving God with a broken, fallen, sinful world. But if 
you can't wrap your mind around that, then you're never going to come to an, under, to an understanding of why the world is the way it is. That, you know, to quote Graham Cook again, what God could prevent with his power, he allows in his wisdom. You know, the Bible talks about, too, about trials, persecutions, and temptations um, basically refining us. So you wouldn't be the, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't know, without adversity, life would just be almost meaningless. Like, you, you, you grow in strength and character through trials um, and temptations and, and challenges of life. You don't grow in, um, you do not grow in when everything's good. You grow through challenge. That's how you grow. Through challenge, temptations, persevere. You know, when, you're, when your character is tested, that's when you grow. When your character isn't tested, that's when you become stale. So you have to, we have to understand that although God doesn't, does, God is not in, doesn't control bad circumstances, but God allows bad things to happen to refine us. So we have to understand that although God, God is not, does not orchestrate a lot of our situations, but he allows them to happen to refine us and to, so that we become the people of God that he wants us to be. That's the point of all those things. Now, I don't understand why some things... There's certain, a lot of things I don't understand. But I'm confident that God is good regardless of what's going on in me or around me. And that's the place you have to come to. And that's, I, this is the thing that I see atheists when I see them on Twitter or my YouTube channel. Time and time again, it's, it, it, they do not understand. They can't wrap their minds and reconcile the fact that there's a good and loving God in a fallen, broken world. And God is not responsible for the way the world is. We are. And until you come to grips with the fact that it's only humans and not God that's responsible for the way the world is, you'll never understand life as it ought to be. Jesus is coming back. And it, he's, he's coming back as a conquering king. He's not coming back as a baby. And you better be ready because he's going to come, like the word says, is it like a thief in the knife. Night, sorry. And all of your arguments, all, all of your philosophizing, all of your intellectual prowess, and, you know, all that stuff is going to mean nothing when you stand before God in judgment. And just so we're clear, you won't be having a chance to put God on the defense. He's going to put you on the defense. So if you're an atheist and you think you've got, you're, you're going to be, be putting God on the defense... Oh, man. Talk about height of hubris and arrogance. <laughs> Foolishness. I think you're going to put the creator of the cosmos on, on defense. How foolish can you be? But it's my prayer if you're an unbeliever. Regardless, irrespective of your worldview, but uh, <clears throat> mostly it's been a lot of atheists <laughs> lately who have been swarming my YouTube channel and... Uh, that's why I've turned comments off because it's just, it's the same old nonsense repeated, rehashed, and just saving everyone lots of time. I'm not afraid of you. I just want you to, yeah, I'm just saving everyone from wasted time. That's why I'm, I've turned comments off, and, <clears throat> and it's interesting that atheists have gone to other um, videos that have nothing to do with atheism and still insist on making comments on those. Because you're so bloody obsessed. You just can't not, can you? But anyways, um, I don't have anything against atheists personally. My, my, <clears throat> my issue is with your philosophy. Because it's leading people to hell. And I don't want people to go there. I don't want you to go there. But hell is a choice. You choose hell by rejecting God and not repenting. Um, between when you're born and when you pass. So 
it's God. God doesn't want you to go to hell, but because He's giving you, you and I, and everyone else, a way out of hell, which is the blood of Jesus and His righteousness. But He won't make you repent. He won't make you um, give up your pride and sin. You have to lay it down and say, "I don't want this anymore." So you know, when I say I'm a Christian, I don't say I don't think or say I'm I don't think I'm better than anybody. You know, as well as I've heard it quoted before, I'm not better than you. I don't, when I say I'm a Christian, I'm not saying I'm better than you. You, I'm saying I'm better than who I used to be. And that's the, what it's all about. I want to be better than who I used to be. So I'm always trying to become the better version of myself with, of course, the help of the Holy Spirit of God and Christ. That's my aim. So my aim is, you know, my, I have three main objectives to being on Twitter or social media in general, which is one is to glorify and exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. And the second is to, um, especially on Twitter, to engage with fellow believers. And third is to reach the lost. And who knows? I have no idea if my videos are starting to crack through some atheists. I believe that the, the, the likelihood of that is high. I think that some of, my, some of the things I've said on social media regardless of what platform I've said it on or what debate I've had. I I think that some of the things I said have probably started to penetrate some of the um, the philosophical um, absurdities of some people. Of course, you know, I may never you know, when I get when I, when I see the Lord in heaven I see people that you know, we're on the other side of the, opposite side of the fence. And, you know, and, and someone's, oh, you know, is that video or that thing or that thing? You know, that's, that's why I do the things that I do here, man. So, because I love people and I love God. Um, <clears throat> that I'm, so, I, you know, you can tell, come on, you can tell by listening to my voice and, looking at my face, that I'm not, I don't have a heart full of hate. I have a heart full of love. I still have to contend with things. I mean, I contend, I mean, I could, I have to contend more with myself than I do with you or anyone else, okay? So, I have to contend with my own, um, my own inadequacies. That's a good word for it. Just like you. You have to contend with it. But the thing is, I got to contend with it with Jesus, but if you don't have Jesus, you're going to end up a frustrated person. Now, the other, <clears throat> as I close this video message, out, I want to, you know, Sigmund Freud, one of the most famous philosophers in the history of philosophy or psychology, <clears throat> um, he tried to live atheism out. It's moral. It's moral implications out. Now, of course, because in atheism, um, subjective morality is the philosophical. Um, default of its philosophy because if you take out of the picture there's no such thing as objective morality now you know, I was thinking about this before I, I started recording this video is that if you live like subjective morality is okay then it means you have to live like nothing matters the thing is by living like nothing matters you, it has to matter to you that nothing matters and that's the kind of thinking that drove Freud, crazy. Because <clears throat> if you're living like it matters and nothing matters, of course, that's a self-defeating proposition. So, and it's the kind of thinking that'll drive you crazy, which it did to him. And it will do to anyone else. If you live like nothing matters, then you have to, then you have to, then it has to matter to you that nothing matters, which again, is of course, is self-defeating and it's the kind of thinking that'll drive people crazy. And it's the kind of thinking that dro drove Freud crazy, okay? And the problem thing is, too, is like, you know, without God, everything is permissible. So if you throw God out of the picture, like, that's why we're, this world is in the mess it's in. Because you reject the standard of God. And by God, I mean the God of the Bible, because he's the only true God. Everyone else is just a figment of people's imaginations. That reject the standard of the Bible. Ten Commandments, or, you know, which Jesus summed up in two, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor is yourself. To you know, to, you can find that in Luke ten twenty seven. You reject that to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. 
then you're going to end up in a mess. We're, we see that mess played out in living color in this world and the world around us. The world has mostly rejected the God, you know, the, the, the God in, in, in the Bible and the standards of, that God has set for us in the pages of Scripture. And that's why we're seeing the world as it is, because everything becomes unstable and chaotic and degenerate once you reject that. Make no mistake, God will return to judge the living and the dead, just like he said in the pages of Scripture. And the only question that's going to matter, the only, the only answer, the only question that's going to matter is, are you, have, have you been saved by the blood and righteousness of Jesus Christ? That's the only question that's going to matter. And where you stand with God and Christ when he returns is going to make all the difference. Nothing else at that point is going to matter at all. It's either, are you saved under the blood and righteousness of Jesus, or you are you under the curse of the law? It's going to be one of those two. If you're under the curse of the law, condemnation. If you're under the blood of Jesus, redemption, salvation, heaven. That is it. So it's my plea for you, if you're not a Christian, to turn to Jesus Christ, repent of your sin, and trust in Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I say this out of genuine love. Peace out, Brother Rob.